ashadu an la ilaha illa allah ashadu an la ilaha illa allah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة الحمد لله حقا فهو الودود خفي الألطاف المنان بنعم متعددة الألوان والأصناف الكريم المجيب المؤمن لكل من ارتاع وخاف اللطيف في بلائه ولو كان من العبد إسراف القريب المحب لمن دعاه بإلحاح وإلحاف نحمده تبارك وتعالى ونسأله النجاة مما نخشى ونخاف ونعوذ بنور وجهه من الجدل والإسراف ونرجوه الصلاح والاستقامة دون مواربة أو التفاف وأن يجنبنا بفضله الفساد والإتلاف وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة حق وإنصاف شهادة شهدت بها شخوصنا وظلالنا والأعضاء منا والأطواف شهادة أقرت بها الطيور والأسماك في البحار وكذا اللآلئ والأصداف وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كامل الأوصاف كلامه در منظوم ولمساته تسعد المحروم وريقه شهد صفاف سيد الكل والجميع وأول متكلم وأول شفيع ليس في ذلك شك ولا خلاف اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الأشراف فوق ما خطه قلم مادح أو أضاف وكلما سعى عبد إلى البيت أو طاف وطالما كان في الكون أضياف وأطياف And before uh, I start my khutbah I could see some brothers are using the phone And I said before using the phone while the imam is giving a khutbah invalidates your prayer Using the phone again Checking the phone email, whatever, while the khutbah is on, that invalidates your whole prayer. So if you have been using it, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, and please, once you come inside the message, try to forget about the phone. Alhamdulillah, we have the phone 24 hours. We use the phone more than we look at the Quran. We spend a lot of time using the phone, more than the time we spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The phone is not going to be with you in the grave. But what will be with you in the grave is your amal. Your acts of worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the right amal. Allahumma ameen. Amma ba'du fa inna asdaq al-hadithi kitab Allah azza wa jal. 
وإن خير الهدي هدي نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة في الدين ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أما بعد إخواني وأخواتي في الله The first priority The first thing that a Muslim should learn is the issue of ghayb Things that are hidden things that we have no idea about. Al-Ghayb, this is number one in your faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, He said what? الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ The first sign of your faith is to believe in the Ghayb. The Ghayb includes many, many things. It's a huge branch of knowledge that we need to learn and we need to understand what's meant by Ghayb. Because sometimes, unfortunately, some Muslim could do things that maybe seem easy, seem something light, but in reality, that's a kind of shirk. That's a kind of polytheism or being away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَبْدَوْا بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَى غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا Nobody knows the unseen. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. Ironically, when from time to time, especially when the year is coming to an end, people, they host a lot of people, and they say, they know what will happen in the future. A person will die. That's normal. Presidents are humans. They die, as the rest of humans, for example. One of the countries is going to fall, for example. That's natural, right? But if you believe in what they say, then there is a major issue with your faith. You need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in the hadith, مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ خَمْسٌ لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ إِلَّا اللَّهِ There are five things that their knowledge is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, لَا يَعْلَمُهَا فِي غَدْنِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even they have statistics, they have institutes, they have whatever, they have equipment. But can they tell? Even if they tell, we do not believe them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me in the Quran that nobody knows what's tomorrow except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even nobody knows what will happen after a minute. Can anyone here predict what will happen exactly after five minutes? Nobody on earth can do that. Because this something belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our master, our most beloved personality, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody on earth has been given knowledge better than him. Nobody on earth has been given taqwa better than him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, قُلْ لَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ I have no idea about ghayb. I have no idea about tomorrow. I have no idea about even what will happen a few minutes later. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. So who is this person on earth who was given knowledge that was not given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Who is this person that has been given specific power that even prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا يُذْهُرُ عَلَىٰ غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا Nobody knows except some prophets, they were given like some news. But nobody knows exactly except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, لا يعلم الغيب. This is your aqeedah. That your faith that you should support. And that's your, I mean, part of your iman. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam is telling us. So, no way for fortune tellers. No way for two sayers, no way for anything. I leave everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's my aqidah. My aqidah, ya mutawakkil, I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ghayb is not my issue. The ghayb is the issue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what should I focus on is now. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to ask me about tomorrow? He is going to ask about the past, what you have done in the past. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holding you responsible for your rizq tomorrow? No. Who is giving you the rizq tomorrow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is giving you the rizq today? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is God has been giving you the rizq yesterday? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says in the Quran, وَمَا مِنْ دَابَ Everything 
that moves, right? Creeps, even little things like worms, for example, or very tiny creatures, subhanAllah. Who is giving us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that's, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed. Nobody knows also what wombs have or carry except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But somebody say, hey, nowadays they could do, for example, sonar and they have so many sophisticated things that they can tell whether the future baby is a boy or a girl. I agree. But can they tell how long he's going to live? Can they tell is he going to be happy and happy? Can they tell he is going to be a believer, a disbeliever, a mu'min, a Muslim, non-Muslim? They cannot. So that's all of that. That's the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything, not the, the gender, whether a male or a female, that's easy. Even before this technology, people in the past, they used to know that. But the, the whole thing about the future baby, that's... That's the, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَتَى يَاتِ الْمَطَرِ Nobody knows. They have the forecast. Sometimes they say it's possible that rains are going to fall. But sometimes they do not. And sometimes rain comes just suddenly without any kind of prediction. So now, okay, let us say they know. But can they know the amount? Little rains, heavy rains, floods, hails. Nobody. That's the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٍ That is completely all that's true. But this part, really we have seen it with our eyes. Nobody knows when and where he is going to die. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He might travel to another place. Nobody knows, subhanAllah. Nobody knows the time, the place, the location of death except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge comes to a complete full stop when it talks about these issues. وَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَتَى تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And nobody knows when the day of judgment except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu he himself, وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَاسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ If I have any idea, if I have the knowledge of the unseen of the ghayb, I would increase or would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase the khair for me sallallahu alayhi wa ala sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يسألونك عن الساعة أيانا مرساها قل إنما علمها عند ربي From time to time. Some people they post or they share some posts. And some people project. They say the end of the world is going, as they said before, it's going to be uh, subhanallah in the year 2000. And when this plan fails, they said, no, when it comes to 2242, 2022. And when it fails, okay, now it's going to be 230, for example. And it's, it's going to fail. And then this is something that can never be accepted. That's something like breaks your faith. That's something that invalidates your faith. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you in the Quran in more than one place, in more than one context, we have a bunch of hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that talk about this issue. Right? What I want to focus on, and I was approached by a very sincere brother here, and I saw this in different places, is the issue of our children. Sometimes the children, they hang, they wear something in their necks. Right? It's called amulet, it's called charm, it's called whatever. That is haram. For a Muslim, that's not acceptable at all. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث صحيح من علق تميمة فلا أتم الله له. The one who wears an amulet, especially he has weird colors, blue color, brown, whatever color. And they, they, they think that's going to protect them. If you bring billions of such amulets, wallahi, well, they will never benefit you. Never. Even for 1%. Because the one who is going to benefit you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is going to protect you against evil? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your adhkar, your closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this, this little thingy, I went to some places, and I see some people, they're hanging something in their homes to protect them against the evil eye. And what they are doing actually, that's the evil itself. Right? That is, wallahi, the evil. 
Maybe the angels do not visit them. Maybe they are far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the companions called Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. He went to visit a person and he was hanging something in his neck. He pulled it and he cut it to pieces. And he said, if you die, and you have Hudayfa, he prayed behind the Prophet If you die, you still have this in your neck. I will never leave the funeral prayer for you. يقول صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح من علق تنيمة فقد أشرك بالله clearly, plainly the one who hangs who wears again his charm amulet whatever in his neck he has committed shirk he has associated another partner with Allah سبحانه وتعالى because Allah سبحانه وتعالى he told me in the Quran, If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you with a kind of calamity, no power on earth can remove this calamity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And if he, I'm sorry, And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans something good for you, nobody on earth can stop it. Nobody! Superpowers, the whole world, they can never stop something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already decided. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in more than one place, Ya Qul Nabi we need to understand the hadith of Rasulullah. Ya Qul fil hadith al Sahih, He is teaching whom Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhum wa ardahuma, He is called Habrul Ummah. Habr means the most knowledgeable person in the Ummah. And He is Saying to him, confirming to him, وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ How many Muslims now in the world? 1.7, 1.8 I think, maybe a little bit more. The whole world itself. More than 7 billion. If the whole world, they decided to harm you, and that's not the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will they harm you? No. If the whole ummah, the Muslim ummah, right? The whole world, they decide to benefit you with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write down, they won't be able to do that. It's from Allah. The whole world, the whole ummah, they will never benefit you except with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already planned for you. And the whole ummah again, they will never be able to harm you except with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already planned for you. Right? Some people, wallahi, this is, this is something really very sad. Some Muslims still now, although thousands of shiuch and they are talking about this issue, but still some, till now some people, they are reading what's called horoscopes, right? Gemini, Virgo, Cancer, Taurus, I don't know the rest of the names, and there are 12, right? How about the one who reads these things? How about, does this affect your faith? It kills your faith. It destroys your faith. Even if you read this for fun, because the first time you read for fun, and the second time you are going to believe in that. Right? So you believe in the power of a human like you, they are writing silly things, I'm sorry for the word, just to make money. Right? They say, okay, something will happen to you, something good coming to you, you are going to receive some money. Usually, I receive some money. So what's new about that, right? But to believe in these things, right? Yaqub Sallam, man dhahaba. Listen carefully. Man dhahaba ila arrafin, fasaddaqahu, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم أستغفر الله العظيم كل ذنب العظيم The one who goes to a fortune teller or reads something about to sing for example and he believes in that what will happen? كفر He has committed disbelief and what was revealed to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه How about if he says oh, I'm just going to you know just to try it I'm not going to believe, but I'm just going to this person or go to this website and read it just for fun. Then for 40 days, your prayers are not going to be accepted. Not only prayers, but all kinds of good deeds. Working day and night and doing charity and whatever. And for doing something minor like this, 
For 40 days, all these things will be rejected. Why? Because your faith has an issue. You need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يقول صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الرقى والتمائم والتوالة الشرك spells, incantations, uh, charms, anything that people wear. Some, some people, by the way, they have something in their cars. MashaAllah, he has got a good car and he wants for his car. And you think that this little blue thing, will, will it will not. It's not going to protect you. It's going to harm you. What will protect you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have, mashallah, a child, if you have a good house, make a thakar. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection. Read Ayat al-Kursi, read al-Ikhlas, Qul a'udhu rabbi falak, Qul a'udhu rabbi nas. Try to learn from the sunnah when the Prophet used to uh, make a kind of ruqya to al-Hasan and al-Hussein, radiyallahu anhuma wa ardahuma. Did he put something in their neck, sallallahu alayhi wa Or did he ask them to wear something in their, for example, rest or whatever? No. But he used to make dua. And he used to ask Allah, the protector. Nobody can protect you on earth except him, Azza wa Jal. Nobody can benefit you on earth except him, Azza wa Jal. If you have this faith, you die in this faith, Wallahi, you will be among the people of Jannah. Qad صلى الله في الحديث صحيح من نات لا يشرك بالله شيء شيء means anything. The one who dies. He does not take any other partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So saying, fortune telling, all of that is a kind of partner with Allah azza wa jal. Because it gives you the, 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 the concept or the impression that they can benefit or they can harm you, right? So if you die freely, you don't believe in all of these things, surely you will be among the people of Jannah. I never, alhamdulillah, and I'm sure that a lot. But we need again to recheck our faith. And believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names, qualities, attributes, everything the Quran is talking about. And stay away from anything that might harm your faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our faith and die all of us as purely muhidun. Aqulu qawl hadha wa sakhfullah al-azim wa akum. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قوة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح من علق والحديث الصحيح من علق تميمة تميمة فلا أتم الله له the one who wears or hangs an amulet من الله سبحانه وتعالى not fulfill his wishes. So what you are doing is the opposite. You are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, to make your wishes true and you are wearing something, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not complete or will not make your wishes to come true, right? So what makes your wishes come true is this, the, the pure dua. كان مسلم فيها في دعاء صيّق الله ما إن نعوذ بك من أن نشرك بك شيء نعلم ونستغفرك لما لا نعلمه والله يعاسك for protection against all types of shirk that we know and that we do not know always avoid anything that might break your your faith or might invalidate your faith may Allah سبحانه وتعالى keep us away from all these things and give us the right return to his religion اللهم آمين رب العالمين اللهم لا تدعلنا في هذا اليوم العظيم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا محتاجا إلا عطيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حاجت من حوائج الدنيا ولا خيرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين اجعل جمعنا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا ما جئت فرق معصوما ولا تدفين شقين ولا محروما اللهم إن نسألك باسمك الأعظم الذي إذا دعيت به أجبت أن تهدي أبناءنا وبناتنا اللهم اجعلهم هداة مهديين لا ضالين ولا مدلين اللهم لا تخرج من نسلنا ولا من أحفادنا من يعبد سواك يا رب العالمين أحينا وأولادنا وأولاد أولاد أولادنا مسلمين وتوفنا جميعا مسلمين موحدين يا رب العالمين اللهم كن في عون إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان فوق كل أرض وتحت كل سماء يا رب العالمين والله واسك يتو give support and relief for everybody who is suffering in every corner of the globe we ask you to guide our sons and daughters and to make them source of guidance for others to have 
mercy and forgiveness for our community to keep our community united, to take all bad feelings, hatred, ego, selfishness away from our hearts and make all of us united and loving one another. Gather all of us with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen rabbil alameen aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa aqim as-salah inna as-salata kanat alim niktab al-mawquta aqim as-salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا استوى استقم الله أكبر اللهم بعد بيني وبين خطايك نشهد أن خطايك من قصة ولا بيض من الدمس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وأنا أقم وجهك للدين حنيفا ولا تكونن من المشركين ولا تدع من دون الله ما لا ينفعك ولا يضرك فإن فعلت فإنك إذا من الظالمين وإن يمسسك الله بضر فلا كاشف له إلا هو وإن يردك بخير فلا راد لفضله يصيب به من يشاء يصيب به من يشاء من عباده وهو الغفور الرحيم الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل إنما أدعو ربي ولا أشرك به أحدا قل إني لا أملك لكم ضرا ولا رشدا قل إني لن يجيرني من الله أحد 
لنجد من دونه ملتحدا إلا بلاغا من الله ورسالاته ومن يعص الله ورسوله فإن له نار جهنم خالدين فيها أبدا حتى إذا رأوا ما يوعدون فسيعلمون من أضعف ناصرا وأقل عددا قل إن أدري أقريب ما توعدون أم يجعل له ربي أمدا عالم الغيب فلا يظهر على غيبه أحدا إلا من ارتضى إلا من ارتضى من رسول فإنه يسلك من بين يديه ومن خلفه رصدا لأن من قد أبلغ رسالات ربهم وأحاط بما لديهم وأحاط بما لديهم وأحصى كل شيء عددا الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم just a minute إن شاء الله قبل announcement إن شاء الله tomorrow at the North Domingo Becca Park there is the Eid picnic from uh, 11 no, 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 from three, two, two, I'm sorry, from two to five, Zakallah khair, Abadna, Zakallah khair. Two to five, inshallah. And secondly, we have this Sunday, as usual, the class for children about the aqidah, about the faith, inshallah. And very soon, we'll have the summer, endured summer program here, or summer camp inside the masjid. So please, inshallah, try to register for your son or daughter from 8 to 14, from the July 23rd until August 7th, inshallah. They will study everything every Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 1, inshallah. Uh, for a prayer, only Isha will be chained tomorrow. And instead of 10, it's going to be 9.45. Isha from tomorrow, inshallah, 9 to 45. And before leaving, don't forget your contribution to the Masjid Brother Khal is there and machines are outside. Another request, please don't bring anything like clothes or books to the Masjid. Clothes, clothes, or books, or anything, no items are needed right now. Whenever there is an appeal for a clothes, for anything, we're going to let you know. So please don't bring anything and leave it outside or at the sister's section. Jazakumullah khair.
كنت بوفر بنزين احسن وكنت اروح من بيت مخصوص للجامعه اروح من الساعه هنا والجامعه جنبنا. عندك عندك العربيه؟ ماشي ماشي سلام. Thank <laughs> you. 